Environmental damage is a serious pressing human rights issue. Article 31 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of a Child highlights that children have the right to play, leisure and rest. But what happens when the environment is contaminated? What happens is what we see in the context of Kabul, where so many young children continue to be affected by the metro that is in their systems. Hi, I'm Natalie. Hi, I'm Muelwa. Hi, I'm Caleb. The three of us met through our advocacy work. Our work borders around championing the African environment. Kawe was home to a lead mine since 1904 to 1994. It's been over 25 years since the mine was closed. But the toxic lead waste has not yet been cleaned up. Informal mining still continues today as people continue to dig up lead and zinc in the toxic waste that is already here in Kawe. The World Health Organization says that any exposure to lead is damaging and if left untreated, can be fatal. Medical research shows that over 95% of children living in areas near the mine have elevated lead bad levels and tens of thousands require medical attention urgently. Hi, Dr. Titi. Hi, Dr. Titi. Good morning, how are you? We are young people from Kabwe and we are excited to have this interview with you this afternoon. Why is the lead pollution still a big problem even though the mine was closed? It's still a problem because lead is a metal uh, and metals don't break down over time. So they, they, they stay in the environment. When you come to Kabwe within the mining area, you see extremely high concentrations. From the work we've done, we see values ranging from roughly about 100 milligrams per kilogram of soil to about 60,000 milligrams per kilogram. These numbers are extremely high and unsafe. The people coming to contact with uh, any of these highly concentrated soils are exposed to this toxic metal. Lead can actually get into your body through just that contact with your skin. Because children are, rap are growing, a lead actually has a big negative impact on them. It affects the way the brain grows and develops, which impacts their uh, cognitive functions and abilities. It affects their learning. In some cases, you would see children exposed to lead who have poor memory, really stunted growth. It depending on the exposure, we can see it might affect the kidneys and other body organs. Neural system is affected. It's really, it's really a, a terrible toxic method to be exposed to as a child. But it's not just children that are impacted. Adults are also affected uh, very severely. Thank you so very much, Dr. Mtiti, for having this call with us. During one of our sensitization programs, we came across the Kutayaya family who shared the story of how lead has affected their children. Bye, yes. Okay. <laughs> Mafia 
to one to Matoma to market, Ara Wheeler, Arais and a chimpy. Bimbi and that much into me, Nala back of much into me. After Bam Pima, cooking, what I should not have to do. Hans <laughs> It is a town that is highly contaminated with lead and uh, those who were there before us did not take keen interest to make sure the environment is protected. First thing we need to strengthen up the, the policies and registration in terms of uh, environmental protection. As the duty bearers are running out of excuses, we as young people are running out of time. Children are still going back to contaminated homes, contaminated playgrounds, contaminated schools. And that is why I believe as young people we have a message for the government of Zambia. It is important for the government to come up with a comprehensive remediation program, one that actually addresses the source of the contamination. The government must provide treatment for affected children. This is Kawe, this is our home, and we deserve to live in a clean, healthy and sustainable environment, one that doesn't make us sick at the end of the day.